Kruger's family and doctors finally find out on whether the groundbreaking skin graft transplant was successful after her bandages were removed yesterday. Around 40 pieces of skin, which were especially cloned and grown in the United States, were transplanted onto her back, her face, her chest, her arms and her legs. The three-year-old underwent this historic skin graft surgery last week after suffering third-degree burns on 80% of her body during a bra accident on the 1st of January. To give us an update on her recovery, we are joined in studio by Dr. Ridwan Meer, who is a plastic surgeon, and Dr. Alan Barrett, head of medical at Genzyme. Good to have both of you. Welcome to Morning Live. Thanks, Leah. And, Thank and, and I'm sure on behalf of South Africa, I'm congratulating you both on, on a successful surgery. Because it, it, it has been a success. You declared it yesterday. What, when we mean a success, what exactly are we talking about? Generally, uh, in medical terms, we refer to more than 60% of a graft taking as successful. So we were very happy to find that it was about 90% of the graft had taken quite quite nicely. Uh, I was being a little bit more conservative. I think it's uh, going to end up being a little bit more than 90%. Wow. Uh, always better to be safe. And the, and, the, and the incredible part is that initially you had been told or was under the impression that only 10% would take. Um, no, uh, initially we thought her survival chances were about Her 10%. survival chances yeah. were 10%. This is okay. right at the beginning on the 1st of January when, when Pippi first came in. Wow. Wow, and here she sits, having done a skin graft. How is she doing? Because she's been heavily sedated for this week. Um, ha have you started bringing her around, or that, that process happened today? We're starting that today. Uh, the idea was to keep her immobile so the grafts wouldn't be disturbed. So we kept her asleep for the last week, and this morning we're starting to wake up. Okay, but all her vitals are good, and she's she's holding up well. She's done very well. Yeah, strong little girl. This. She's uh, she's sure. an absolute. Uh, she's got a strong spirit. There. Yeah, and mm. strong parents as well, because I mean I'm I'm reading articles of how the parents are handling this, and mm. I don't know as a mother how I could handle something like this, but uh, we we have to give them huge support where we can. Now this is one of the most interesting uh, surgeries to take place in South Africa because mm. it's never been done before. Now, now Genzyme, put us in the picture. What exactly is Genzyme? Uh, Genzyme is a, a, a biotechnology company uh, based in the US uh, and we have uh, an affiliate in South Africa. Uh, we were brought over by Sanofi last year, uh, which really sort of added to our capabilities. So the lab in, in, uh, in Boston were the, the, the forerunners and that started this technology with the help of a professor to develop the skin in this whole process. Yeah. Where did the idea come from? Because if it's never been done before, we've had so many burn victims in, in South Africa. Where did the specific idea come from to say, right, this is the, the absolute right candidate to do it on? Uh, it wasn't an idea from us. Uh, it was really the mother approached the, the, yeah. mother approached the company and uh, the, the US, the Boston-based Sanofi people then contacted me in South Africa and said, can we do this? We've never done it in South Africa. They'd, they'd done it in the US and, and a few other countries in Europe, but never in South Africa. Yeah. And uh, we then started the discussions with Dr. Mia and the mother to see is, if it would really take and if it would be viable and, and possible logistically to fly it over in such a short period of time. And it was. It was. <laughs> Everything mean, just worked out that, perfectly. That story <laughs> of it arriving and landing and getting to the hospital in like an, uh, 16 minutes or something, yeah. I mean, that was, that was absolutely incredible because you have a, you've got a time frame to use the yeah. skin. What it, just talk us through that. What yeah. is the time frame? The half life or, or the, the, the shelf life really of the, the graft is about 24 hours. You do have a bit of leeway afterwards, so then in the, the cells gradually start declining. But... Uh, uh, we got it over in 24 hours. They, what happens is they, they keep it in a special box and a special medium to protect the cells uh, yeah. until they get into the patient. So from when it leaves the lab in Boston uh, until when it arrives in South Africa on the patient is 24 hours. Uh, Dr. Mia, if something like this has ever been performed before, I mean, was this a first of this kind of operation for you? Yeah, absolutely. We've, it's never been done in this country before. Yeah. I've only read about it, and that's how we you know, presented it to her mother. And she said to us, what are the alternatives? What can you do besides using uh, temporary pig skin or, or using cadaveric skin temporarily? You know, and we said to her, this is what you can look up, and if we get it, great. Uh, so this is my first time. and. Uh, very similar in many ways to normal skin grafting that yeah. we would do on people where we harvest their own skin, uh, but a little bit different in that we had to be extremely careful. These grafts are very fragile, they're very thin, uh, much thinner than your normal skin graft would be. 
Now, did you uh, consult with other doctors around the world that had done this type of surgery before already? We had a number of teleconferencing sessions, uh, Alan and I, with, uh, with the company at Genzyme in, in, in Boston, uh, as well as a Dr. Sven Kili, who, who is uh, representative of the company in the United States, uh, so originally a South African, funny enough. And, uh, and you know, we, we went through the whole process, uh, so it was almost uh, having online tutorials uh, just beforehand, and also honing our own skills with regard to what we do quite regularly, which is skin grafting or burn wounds. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's quite a common occurrence elsewhere were in other countries? Well, mostly U.S. In the U.S., <coughs> they, do, okay. they do around 125 per year, um, but a few in Europe, but then this was definitely the first in Africa. So. First and after this experience, I don't think the last. I don't think so. I think yeah. now that the awareness is out there and, and people are know about it, we'll probably be approached Quite a bit more. We're actually watching, I mean, we're busy watching on screen the development of this. And I think if you can talk us through this, I'm sure people are watching this quite fascinated. But <laughs> how, what is actually happening on screen in terms of, of the development of these skin cells? What they do is they actually take a biopsy of, of uh, the healthy skin. So Dr. Mia took a biopsy of, of Pepe's healthy skin. And then what they do is they isolate those, just the epidermal, the keratinocytes in the epidermal layer of the skin. They then plant it in with um, mouse cells that have no DNA, so they're inactive mouse cells, and they then grow it on a sort of a platform on a medium that that uh, to to keep it sturdy and to protect it. And yeah. those her own cells then start multiplying. Yeah. And when they've they've multiplied enough to about five to eight cell layers thick, yeah, they yeah. they're then ready to be transported and and grafted onto the patient. Fantastic. Now, she actually received 40 pieces of specially cloned skin. Yes. Uh, that's, that's what we know. How, how does it work? Take us through the process of how the actual operation went. Well, essentially what we had to do was we were in communication with the transplant team who were picking it up from the airport and they were letting us know how far they were from arriving at the hospital. So we had to have her in theatre, all her wounds nice and clean and, uh, and the bed ready for, for, for the grafts. And, uh, you know, it, it almost worked like clockwork as soon as the grafts got there. Uh, we had to make sure there's no possibility of infection. So we were in a controlled theater environment. And then when the skin got there, we, we had to carefully place it onto her body. So we used clips and, uh, and little stitches to secure the grafts. And then in addition to that, we had to splint her and, and, and keep her, you know, very immobile after that yeah. to make sure those grafts didn't move. Going forward, what, is, what does a procedure like this mean for other patients with skin burns? I mean, is this... Okay, let me ask this question first. Is this an exceptionally expensive exercise? It is. Uh, this, this came at a large expense to the family. They yeah. raised uh, a lot of money online and, uh, you know, from friends, family, supporters around the country. People have opened their hearts and their pockets uh, to this cause. Uh, it, it was quite a cost to the family uh, to get the skin. We're hoping that this idea is opening the door to our hospitals and other uh, other patients, uh, you know, because uh, unfortunately the cost factor is what's prohibitive uh, with yeah. most patients who need it, yeah. um, especially in our setting. Yeah, but, but, but having, I'm sure some people having seen what's been happening now, have you had a lot of interest, a lot of people saying, okay, we, we want to try, we're ready to do that? Absolutely, I've had colleagues from all over the country, people I've studied with before that now work at different hospitals, uh, are inquiring about the procedure. Uh, and, 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 you know, saying they, they've got patients in a similar sort of situation that need, that need skin grafting uh, like this as well. Yeah. Well, we, we know one thing about Puppy is that it's all brand new. I mean, these are new, this is, these are new burns. This is something that's, that's fresh from the 1st of January. What about people with old burns and, and that, that's been there for a long time and perhaps their skin has been damaged through this? Is it possible to do this as well? Well, uh, it, it hasn't really been done. It's usually on, on, on fresh burn wounds. Okay. But if, if people don't have enough healthy skin that they could graft, uh, it's certainly a possibility that, that this could be used. Yeah. Often people have enough of their own healthy skin that they can take a graft from. But the moment you go over 50% of, of your body's surface area, then you don't want to scar too much of the remaining tissue, uh, remaining skin. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yes, it's it's certainly a possibility, but they've mainly been using it for for burn victims, or it, for fresh burns. Quite an interesting question. Um, can an individual like myself, who you know, at this at this point in time, I'm fine. But if I feel that I would like to store skin cells, 
for an eventuality for my children or for anybody is this a possibility that you can actually store the skin cell if something does go wrong that it is there and you're able to do it or is that not where we're at right now well what they actually have done is they are storing puppy skin in Boston yeah so if she were to need a, a skin graft uh, luckily she doesn't now it all went well and she had more than 90 percent coverage but if for some reason she didn't have full coverage and she needed more skin they could actually take the biopsy out of the freezer yeah. isolate some more cells and, do it and again. grow more skin for her, yeah. and for an individual that's interested in doing something like that is it possible i've never asked the question but i'm, I'm sure it's possible <laughs> I can i'm not quite sure how long, they, how long they, they it's viable how long they can keep those cells but i'd, I'd imagine it's for quite a long long period of time yeah i think that's not the biggest problem because the yeah, the biopsy can be taken and, and be in the lab within, in the Sanofi lab within four or five days. So, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not going to be a huge, huge yeah. wait. That's not, not the biggest expense. Fantastic. Well, guys, I have to tell you, this is a, a story that's got the nation speaking and on the edge of their seats. I think last night, when you were taking those bandages off, how were you feeling? More importantly, how did it feel when you were taking those bandages off to see what have I got here? What's the result? I must say I had more anxiety than I did when we put the skin on. I can imagine. Uh, there was a lot of pressure, you know, on the one hand, the family, on the one hand, the rest of the world watching and, uh, you know, just worried about the patient herself thinking about the next step if the skin hadn't taken. So it was, we had to very carefully remove the bandages. It took us an hour longer to remove the bandages and look at the grafts than it did to actually put the grafts on. Um, so it was, it was a very nervous time for us and, uh, you know, we had to proceed very slowly. It was very hot in the theater. We had to keep it warm for her sake. Um, so excited, but, uh, but still very anxious. And, uh, you know, it was just such a relief to see that graft had taken so well. Uh, Ellen was with me in theater, so <laughs> it, was, uh, it was so good to keep pointing out the skin to him. And I think every time we exposed a different area, wow. uh, we had a round of applause in the Everybody theater. Everybody in theater was really? clapping hands. I it was imagine. amazing, amazing feeling. Yeah. My goodness. No, that must have been was awesome. a, a great victory for South Africa, I think, for being able to pull Absolutely. off a surgery of this kind. And also for, for what it's all about. Mm. But, but now we wait for Puppy to heal, for her to wait up and to, to actually to see her and just and just know that she's okay thank you so much for joining us here um, three-year-old Pippi Kruger undergoing this historic skin graft surgery uh, it's an incredible story everybody's talking about it and I think last night waiting to find out waiting everybody waiting to find out how the operation went as you know she'd been sedated for the last week uh, since the, the, the procedure was done and uh, the good news is 90% of the skin has taken and she's she's on the mend and doing very very well again let's just uh, give accolades to dr ridwan mir who is the plastic surgeon who performed the operation and dr alan barrett the head of medical from genzyme who organized the entire thing to get the skin into south africa uh, from boston 24 hours in order to do it and get the operation done so that's uh, not an easy task but it's been done all right there we go let's